Alright, in this video I'm finally going to introduce to you guys the concept of a derivative, although I kind of already have introduced, introduced you to it, I just haven't been explicit about it, so we're going to define it right now. A derivative of f, so we say the derivative of a function f at a, or at a point a, which we denote as f prime of a, and this is the formula for it, f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a, take a guess right here what I'm going to say, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So this was the slope at a point. When we picked a to be a certain value, that is the slope at a point, this function here is the slope of the whole curve. So when we have a function that looks like this, we're taking the slope at every single point and we're making a graph out of it. So we take the slope here, we take the slope here, slope here, the tangent lines here, 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 and then we make a little graph of it. So our, if this is our function f of a, then f prime of a, uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be 100% accurate, it's kind of going to look like that. And it is a slope graph. That's what a derivative is. So we're going to jump right into an example, since there really isn't much to this limit, or to this video. Uh, okay, let's take f of x is going to equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. And we find, find the derivative at a point. So I should remind you that there was one more formula for this, and this is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. And I say I don't really like to use this formula because it's difficult algebraically, but in some cases like this one, very useful to use this formula. Okay, let's plug some stuff in here. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h is going to be 3 times a plus h squared minus 4 times a plus h plus 1 minus f of a, so minus 3a squared plus 4a minus 1. This is a huge, huge top to this equation, like just ridiculous all over h. So you can see why your algebra skills need to be a little bit handy here. Okay, so we're going to expand a plus h squared out, so we're going to get a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus 4a minus 4h. We're going to simplify a little bit the plus 1 minus 1 cancel, so we'll get plus 4a minus 3a squared all over h. Okay, <laughs> this is this is beginning to be lots of fun, isn't it? Okay, so we have 3a squared plus 6ah plus 3h squared. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on here. This minus 4a and this plus 4a will cancel. So now we have minus 4h plus, oops, this will be minus 3a squared all over h. Okay. And now what we have to do is we have a bunch of a's here, and what the hell do we do with these a's, man? Who knows? Actually, I do know. I'm going to tell you guys what we're going to do. Let's finish simplifying. Okay, so now we get the limit as h goes to 0 of 3a squared, and 3a squared will cancel here, and we're going to get a nice little function here, 6ah plus 3h squared minus 4h all over h. Okay, now we can do some canceling. h, there we go. Okay, so once we've done some canceling, again, you can divide each term individually and get the same thing if you're confused about what's going on. The limit as h goes to 0 of 6a plus 3h minus 4. So now we take h to be 0, and then we get 6a minus 4. 
Okay, so here's our derivative function, 6a minus 4. If you want, you can write it as, um, so we have, what is it, f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. Then we can write f prime of x is going to equal to 6x minus 4. We just replace a with 4. And you guys don't know how to check this really quick, but at this point I can say this is definitely right. You'll see a method in the next section that I do. Well, not directly the next section, but in a few videos you'll see how to check this really, really quickly. Alright, so that is basically how to find a derivative. This is the slope of the whole function. Slope of whole function. Slope of function f of x. Every single point that it is defined, this is the slope function. Okay, perfect. Now let's get into what the slope really means. What is the tangent line actually representing? And this, this is the biggest part. This is what people don't necessarily grasp and have difficult with application problems because they don't understand that the slope is related to the rate of change. So secant line is the change or at least the rate of change. Now this tangent line here that we find, this tangent or derivative is the instantaneous, so instant rate of change. That is the rate of change exactly at a point. So I'm, I'm gonna prove this to you real quick. If we have the rate of change, we know the rate of change is equal to delta y over delta x. And this is equal to say, y minus your initial y value over x minus your initial x value. So this is your rate of change. When we take an instantaneous rate of change, we take the limit as delta x goes to zero. So we're making this really, 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 really small. So it's at that point where if we look at this, we'll, we'll expand this out to reflect the same thing. So this is the limit as x goes to x zero of f of x minus f of x zero over x minus x zero. So these things represent the same thing. These are instantaneous rates of change. Again, on a graph, if we have a little graph here, we can see that that was a terrible, terrible drawing for what I wanted to do. If we take this point right here, the instantaneous rate of change is going to be the tangent line at this point, so we want the slope at that point, and this is found by taking the limit as x goes to x naught of this function right here. So the tangent line is the instantaneous rate of change. And you must remember that, since a lot of people remember that, oh, the derivative is the tangent line. Now they don't make the connection that it's all about the rate of change. What is, what is calculus used for? What is the purpose of it? And you say, oh, to find tangent lines, and you say, okay, that's great from a mathematical perspective, but what application does it have in real life? It's the rate of change. It's, it's this thing right here. It's very important, the rate of change. Never, ever forget it. The instantaneous rate of change, rather. So you always know what's happening at a certain point in time, exactly how fast, say, salt is leaving a container at that exact point of time, or if you have a mixing problem, how much like the concentration of salt, how it's changing over time as pure water comes in and salty water leaves. There's so many different applications of this, and I'll try to do some in the future when we get to the derivative section, like in depth with derivatives. I'll show you some nice applications to illustrate them. But right now, I should take a break, and I should give you guys a couple practice problems. Actually, I'm only going to give you one. And this is going to be a little bit difficult, I hope. So I'm going to start by giving you the tangent line equation. So here's the equation. Um, y is equal to 4x minus 5. And I'm going to say that we're looking at a equals 2. So this is the tangent line when a is equal to 2. Here's what I want you to find. I want you to find f of 2, and I want you to find f prime of 2. This is going to take some thinking. So please go over the video, 
You see what I'm talking about, what a derivative is, what the tangent line equation is from the previous video, and see if you can figure this out. Hopefully this will all make sense. It's much easier than it seems, but pause the video, take some time. I'll come back in a second and help you guys out with this. Okay, hopefully you thought long and hard about this. So, f of 2. Well, when a is equal to 2, you get this equation y is equal to 4x minus 5. So, what I really should start with is the derivative at 2. So, f prime of 2, we know what this is. This is the slope at 2. Now, what is the slope in an equation? Well, y is equal to mx plus b. What is m? m is 4. f prime at 2 is 4. Okay. But what is f at 2? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to plug 2 into x, and we're going to solve for y. Because this is essentially saying y is equal to f of 2. So y is equal to 4 times 2 minus 5, which is equal to 8 minus 5, which is equal to 3. So f of 2 is equal to 3, f prime of 2 is equal to 4, and that's our equation. So we're, we're going to graph this. Just for the sake of graphing it, you might as well. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you have a point here. It goes up 4 to the right 1, so there's another point, uh, 1, 2, 3, that's 1, that's 2, goes up another 4, ends up at this point right here. You have a nice little tangent line that looks like this, just to check, and well, let's take a look here. This is our point A, and this is F of A. But we know a is equal to 2, so let's make that a little bit more specific. Let's say this is 2 and f of 2. What is this? That's 3. Perfect, we got that right. What is the slope? Rise over run. 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1. 4 divided by 1 is 4. So we just checked it out, and it is right. All right, next time when we come back, we're going to talk about derivatives as functions and we'll go a little bit more in depth and then after that we'll start a little bit more review about the stuff we'll finish up this chapter which we're going to call chapter two or chapter one of this course and then we'll start into some quick derivatives after that